Hey guys, it's Aiden, back from the nest, and today I'm bringing you another episode of Minecraft proper. This is uh, episode 10 or 11, I believe. Uh, I did just get done recording part of episode, uh, this this episode. It would be this episode, but I accidentally... I deleted the file just because it was running long and I had done a bunch of nonsense. And uh, I could have cut some of it out, but I don't want to let my recording timer run that long. So here we are again. Uh, I'm going to sleep real quick. In today's episode, we are building, uh, you may remember... Um, how I mentioned that cave could be turned into a farm area. You may have also noticed this door. So, we're going to come down here and I'll be able to fill this thing in as well. So, I've done a small bit of work. And we talked about, I talked about some various things. For the most part, I just put in some jungle, jungle logs. So, mainly what I talked about. So, in the last episode, we finished the storage room, which I'm really happy with how that turned out. And, uh, mainly what we've been talking about so far is, uh... I posed a question to you, the viewers, which I will pose to you again, which is that, uh, for anyone who's Zelda fans, you, you'll, you'll know this, which is that, um, uh, Link, in the Ocarina of Time games, uh, game, technically, there, technically there are two, but they're not both Ocarina of Time, it's, in the Ocarina of Time game, Link is often, uh, the Link, who is an adult in that one, adult, Ocarina of Time Link, the proper hero of time, is often portrayed in comics and media and books and things about Zelda as being a very mature, noble, adult person. However, he was just sealed for seven years uh, as like a ten-year-old. He didn't have some coming-of-age mental maturity stage, so it, it, he should, uh, effectively, uh, honestly, um, portrayals of adult Link in the Ocarina of Time series should just be exactly what you'd expect. A 10-year-old piloting an adult body, it should not be... He, he, he doesn't have any qualifications to be mature. He literally just skipped seven years, like he just woke up. Like, it, it, from his perspective, it would be like he woke up and the whole world changed. Like, it's not like a sleeping wake up. It would be like if I suddenly was 17 years older and the entire house that I live in right now is just like ruins. That, that, that's essentially what it would be like, is if I just, everything around me suddenly changed in a flash instant. Because that's, that's what it, that's how they portrayed it in the game. They did not portray it as Link uh, going through some dream state where he aged to mental maturity. They literally said, in the, in the game even, they said, uh, your body was not yet capable of wielding the Master Sword effectively, so we sealed you for seven years so that you would be an adult. And I'm like, so, so he didn't, it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with his mind. It all had to do with his, with his body, because he was too small to wield the sword properly. But by that logic, Link, oh, adult Link should just be like a ten-year-old piloting an adult's body. He shouldn't be... He's not, he's not all noble and whatnot. I guess the experiences he goes through after sealing could g gain him some maturity, could help him grow a bit, but he should still have the personality of a 10 year old. And the way Child Link is portrayed is completely different. He's portrayed as a child, but, <laughs> which is, you know, he went through some pretty messed up stuff as a child as well. And then, uh, in the end of the game, when you go, then Majora's Mask takes place, and he goes through even more traumatic things, which, honestly, the events of Majora's Mask are somewhat more traumatic than anything that happens in Ocarina of Time. Granted, his friends, I guess, supposedly die to become the sages, which is a little messed up, and he does get his childhood ripped away from him, which, again, is a little messed up, but Majora's Mask is so bad. It's terrifying. Speaking of Majora's Mask, or speaking of Zelda games in general, I've actually played most of them uh, in my later, in my more recent life. Uh, I've actually played, I believe, every game, according to the uh, Wikipedia, I've played every Zelda game except for the CDI games, which I just, I don't think I'm ever going to play because they're so bad. I might so at some point in late into my later life play those games just for the sake of having completed every Zelda game. But, uh, I don't think I'll be playing the CDI games. If I do, I'll definitely be playing them on this channel. Uh, because... God, 
Having to experience the CDI games is definitely something I'll need to put on on camera, on video. I'll have a webcam and everything so you can see the agony, agony across my face. Um, so yeah, look, look forward to that in the next five to ten years. Because that's definitely not happening anytime soon. I'm not, not going to subject myself to that. Uh... <laughs> Well, I don't even have a, uh, I don't even have a capture card for my TV, so couldn't record it if I wanted to. Uh, speaking of favorite games, favorite Zelda games, uh, uh coming from someone who has played almost every Zelda game, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, my favorite one is actually Breath of the Wild. As far as traditional Zelda games go, I like, um, Phantom Hourglass the most, actually. As far as like the puzzle game aspect of Zelda games, mainly because most of the Zelda games I've played uh, have, have all been played in my more recent life, uh, within the past few years or so. However, as a as a smaller child, ages five to ten, uh, the only Zelda game I owned, I guess I own I had Wind Waker, which I absolutely love Wind Waker. However, I've not played it in so many years that. I can't, I can't give a good perspective on it, though I absolutely adored the game, and I still adore watching videos of it. It's, if I could get it for the GameCube for cheap again, I still own a GameCube, I could... Wait here. I still own a GameCube. It, it's right here. It, it functions perfectly. It, uh, I have all the connections for it, the controllers. And I have all that. It, it, I blew all the dust out of it, so it, it, if I blew out the dust out of it again, I mean, other than the lock button for the release being a little bit sticky, this thing still works. I have a Wii, too. My Wii is just, like, right there. So I have a Wii, a GameCube, and a Nintendo Switch. I'm a very Nintendo-oriented person. So this garden room, this, uh, farm room, is coming along quite nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and cut ahead when we get the ceiling and stuff done. Uh, so I'll see you then. Cutting back in here really quickly just because I, I want to finish my story as to why uh, Phantom Hourglass is my favorite uh, Zelda game. is because uh, when I was a kid it was pretty much the only Zelda game I owned. And my friend, my best friend, uh, who is still my best friend growing up, uh, wa also had the game on her DS. And so we, it had a versus function where you could do like little like mini game battles like battleship and maze and stuff. And you could also trade ship parts with each other which was, I was my proudest accomplishment, something I'm still proud of today, it was the coolest thing, uh, was you could customize a ship that you rode around on in that game. Uh, with various parts you could find from anchoring, uh, uh, fishing them up from the ocean. And if you had a friend who also had the game, you could trade with them to get various ship parts. And so, with the help of my friend growing up, and my own playing of the game, I, uh, managed to accomplish getting the full set of what I still consider to be the coolest, the coolest set in the game. It was like, uh, like metal with, like, red and gold trim. I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it looked so cool. And if I can find that game, uh, I will gladly make a little video showing it, showcasing the um, ship because it was so cool. It, I still think it's one. It, it's just an accomplishment that marks my childhood. When I finally finished that ship, I was like, "Oh yes, this is. This was a valuable way to spend my time, certainly." Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cut ahead to when we're actually done, now that i finished my story. Uh, sorry about that. Alright, see you then. Alright, hi, welcome back. I have gone ahead and finished out the ceiling in this room and most of the other details. Uh, including, um, I haven't done this, this, uh, tube yet. But that is, uh, next on my list. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick, quick run through of how this looks. Um, I'm put in. I guess I didn't. I guess I missed a spot there. Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick run through of how this ceiling, this whole room in general, looks, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut ahead to when we have finished the uh, digging out the main rooms. So see you then. 
Ooh. Hi. Quick intermissionary break here. In inter intermission break. I've got the cow's room I've kept a bit smaller than I normally would build uh, because I want the cows to be concentrated. I might make this room slightly bigger outwards wise. Um, but I, I mostly just want to have a bunch of cows in a small area so it's easier to kill them uh, and then you know, get more. I've kept the sheep area a bit larger uh, and the uh, wheat. I, I've used the same general design for all the wheat and the carrots and stuff. I, uh, I'm not done yet though. And I've got this. This is for the chickens. This is actually a bit bigger than I would normally do for the chickens. I'd normally just do them a nine block area. But I decided I want to get, wanted to go a bit bigger for this one. At some point, eventually, uh, much later down the series, these will all be replaced with auto farms of various types. So, you know, the chicken farm will uh, be set up on hoppers that run to rails. Uh, you know, hoppers that go to minecarts that go up into my chest and deliver eggs directly to my chest. And uh, the sheep farm. Uh, fun fact in 1.14... Dispensers with uh, dispensers that have um, shears in them will shear sheep when uh, activated. So uh, you could have hoppers that run to minecarts that run to your chest to drop wool into your chest from your sheep farm that auto shears your sheep when they get close. Like you could have it set up on a tripwire so that every sheep that is unsheared that goes up against either side of your walls gets sheared and the items drop into hoppers right here. And then they you could fill the middle part with grass so they have somewhere to regrow their stuff. You just have a few sheep that occasionally will go to the walls. Auto farm, but it, it's not an auto farm that's going so fast that your chest fill up with wool. You know, it just goes at its own pace. Same with dispensers and buckets for milk, I think? No, I don't think that's a thing. But, you know, I mostly keep cows around for the food source of steak rather than any, like, milk or anything. I don't really need milk, and if I do, I can milk a cow, but yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause it again and finish this work and maybe take a break to go get some food uh, off camera, so see you then. Hey guys, welcome back from what for you will be a cut, a very short cut that was only about an instant with a small transition. However, for me, it has been around 13 hours uh, because... I got really tired halfway through doing this, and I finished this room and this room, and then I got really tired and went to bed. Uh, and when I awoke, it was now. It was very recently that I awoke, and I had slept for, uh, I went to bed at about 9 a.m., and when I awoke... It was, uh, it had become 9 p.m., so, and I had, I had paused the recording for a couple hours already, so, we've been gone for quite a while. I've been gone, for me it's been quite a while, I'm coming back into this with a fresh, rejuvenated energy, uh, but for you guys it'll only have been a couple seconds, so, I'm gonna go ahead and cut again. And finish these last two rooms. I've put in a little room for where mushrooms are going to be. And then we'll do a progress check. And then I'll probably put in some floors and things in these rooms. And see you then. Alright, hello. We are back. Um, take you through a quick rundown. Once again, we've done it. We've completed these last two rooms. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I did mention this. But this is going to be a little room built out of stone brick and stuff for mushrooms. I'm actually going to expand it back one. Uh, so that we can make every wall out of stone brick, including this wall. Which will also make it a little deeper in, which makes it a little bit darker. Which means, you know, uh, better mushroom lighting. Anyway, we've done all the rooms. And I'm super tired once again. Uh, in fact, I'll probably finish this off camera, maybe in a half episode. Means this episode's gonna be a bit shorter, maybe, when this, this would normally be one of the longer episodes. It's just, I'm, 
This is so exhausting. Doing mining out all of this was so exhausting. It literally was so exhausting that I stopped halfway through and went to bed for 12 hours. And then I woke up again, just got back on, started loading it up, and I'm already ready to go back to bed again for another 12 hours. This is exhausting work, clearly. And so, I'm considering finishing it off camera where I have more energy and then moving the animals in in uh, tomorrow's episode which will just be a half episode well you know when I upload a half episode I usually want to upload a full episode with it so tomorrow's episode if this is episode 10 then tomorrow's episode will be 10.5 and 11 but if this is episode um, 11 then tomorrow's episode will be 11.5 and well, and also there's a skeleton and an ocelot. Look at that! An ocelot! That's the coolest thing. Also, I'd like to mention... For you guys, you probably just saw this recently, but for me... It has been... About 24 hours since I last came outside of that cave and actually saw like my yard again and let me tell you in the rain with the light and the dock ugh, it's so refreshing to be out here I don't want to work in the caves anymore I want to go out into the world which actually fits the plans for the next episode is probably gonna be some detailing work around the place and then getting the heck out of here and going on an adventure because I need to space myself I need, I need to give myself breaks I'm gonna get crazy exhausted otherwise and just like burn out on trying to do anything in this world anyway I'm gonna leave this one here guys this is Hayden signing out and I will see you in the Skyhawklings remember to spread your wings and of course stay awesome bye <laughs>